when you're managing a project, there's going to be some risk. There's going to be um, some trade-offs between project crashing um, and the cost for those projects. There's going to be um, some, some items on the critical path, those activities that you really need to manage and make sure that they don't slip so that your entire project doesn't uh, get delayed. So with project management, there's also a component of risk management as well. So risk is the occurrence of events that have undesirable consequences, right? We don't want to have delays. We don't want to have increased costs. We don't want uh, our project to not meet the required specifications. Um, so that is just the inherent risk of a project, those things that could go wrong. Risk management is really just identifying those potential risks up front. How do we create backup plans or contingency plans um, so that um, we have um, backup plans in case things are going wrong, right? So um, in San Diego, for instance, if we're doing some kind of construction project, we generally don't have to worry too much about bad weather delaying uh, the, the project duration time. But in other cities and other states where, you know, the, the winters are terrible or the summers are really hot or there's flooding or whatever it may be, you have to take into consideration that they have a greater risk of those projects not being completed on time due to poor weather. So they can put contingency plans in place, like having additional contractors ready, being prepared to pay for expedited shipping, having additional labor uh, available to work overtime, whatever it may be, um, having those contingency plans in place in case um, some of those project risks start, start to come to fruition. So with risk management, we want to identify those risks. We want to analyze and assess them. We want to work to minimize them up front that's key because that'll keep our costs lower and then create those contingency plans. So um, for risk, event, probability, and cost, what this slide is really just trying to articulate is the blue line is cost and the red line is probability. We want to catch errors in our project early. We're more likely to catch errors early in the project versus late in the project. And if we do catch those errors early, it's not going to cost us much to correct them. But if we've already started designing and building our product, or we're already halfway through a construction project and we realize that something is wrong way back in the start of that project, then it's going to cost us more later in the product life cycle or the manufacturing cycle or the construction cycle to overcome the occurrence of that risk event. So we want to try and proactively think through how can we minimize our risks? How can we make sure that each activity is completed on time? and what are our contingency plans up front to keep our costs low in the event that some of the risk events do happen. We want to keep those costs low. So the more we do up front in that, in that project management, in that planning and scheduling phase, the less we'll have to do during the controlling phase, which is going to be more expensive. So um, project management information systems. There are lots of systems. Uh, that you can use for program management and project management. That's Microsoft Project. It's very well known that um, Microsoft Project is great for project management. Uh, Oracle is another example. MindView, HP, there's, you know, again, there's a lot of different uh, information systems that are out there. And what they do is, is they help us to manage these complex uh, projects using the CPM method. And so in addition to scheduling each task, Project managers can assign resources to each task. Um, the software will spot over allocation to um, individual resources. So if I'm Brent and I'm assigned to multiple activities in this project, and we think activity A is going to take eight hours of my time, and activity B is going to take 20 hours of my time, it will spot when I'm over allocated, when Brent's out of time, right? So that's what Microsoft Project and many of these other project management information systems can do. They can determine over allocation for resources and also for costs. It's a great for tracking costs to see, okay, if we plan then it taking us this many hours or costing us this much, then we'll be able to know if we're on track for both timing and for our costs. One of the best things that project management information systems do is really to track uh, progress. Okay, so we've got a baseline. So for Milwaukee paper, as an example, the baseline was we had 16 weeks to complete the project. We believe the project will take us 15 weeks. So our baseline is 15 weeks. If things are going well, maybe we'll complete it in 14 weeks. But if things aren't going well, then we know there are activities that we could potentially crash 
to bring us down to that 14 weeks or even earlier if we need it. So tracking progress is great um, and it keeps track of how we're doing versus that baseline. A Gantt chart shows the current schedule versus the baseline and we see where those deviations are. And project managers can work to alleviate those deviations by managing the individuals and the team to make sure that that project is on track. So again, here's some of the project management information systems. You've got Microsoft Project, Oracle Primavera, HP Project, Fast Track. Those are some of the, the main project um, management software systems that are out there. These are great because they follow a strict methodology. It shows a logical planning structure so people know the sequence of events, right? Step A, step B, step C, um, when those things are supposed to start, when they're supposed to be completed, who is assigned to that activity. And so it's just great visually to see uh, who is responsible for each activity. It also helps us to know if things are not going according to plan. So if activities are uh, falling behind schedule, then we'll know, okay, we need to go and address that activity. Um, and there's lots of different ways that you can play around with these charts, especially with Microsoft Project. You know, you can do it in the uh, Gantt view chart. You can do the critical path method chart so you can see what the critical path is. You can look at uh, which individuals are assigned which activities. And so there's lots of great uh, different tools that you can that you can utilize when doing project management uh, software. Here's an example of Microsoft Project. Uh, again, you've got your activity uh, on the far left. You have your duration for that activity right next to it. You have your start date for that activity and then the finish date for that activity. And then the visual Gantt chart to the far right of how long each one of those activities will take. You can see that the activities in red are the critical path. And so again, it's just very, very visual, very easy to see and read. And we know who is working on which activity and when they're supposed to be completed with those. And so I just pulled this right off of the internet. Uh, there are hundreds of examples like it to where you can just go and say, you know, Microsoft Project Gantt chart, and it'll show you all the different options that are available uh, for, uh, for project management. So, okay, and that wraps up chapter three on project management.